with eight weeks to go before the elections, it's time for another episode of Midterm Madness. In this episode, we'll be looking at Joe Manchin and the Kavanaugh effect. How will the nomination of Brett Kavanaugh to the Supreme Court affect Senator Joe Manchin's chances of being reelected to the Senate in the 2018 midterm elections? My take, no effect at all. So let's just get right into it. President Trump's nomination of Brett Kavanaugh to the Supreme Court has been more polarizing than Star Wars The Last Jedi. The Democrats are pushing for a hard nay on Kavanaugh's nomination. Well, most of them are. There's a few of them still on the fence trying to decide whether they should go yay or nay on Kavanaugh. And just by coincidence, it's Democrats who are up for re-election in red states, states won by Donald Trump in 2016. I'm talking Joe Donnelly, John Tester, Heidi Heidenkamp, that rascal Claire McCaskill, and Joe Manchin, who we're going to be focused on. So, Joe Manchin is running for re-election in West Virginia, which was won by Trump. And some people are worried he won't win because West Virginia has gone so red and he's a Democrat. He's blue. So Manchin has become the poster child of these unreliable Democrats who are so worried about being re-elected in these red states that they've been begun siding with Trump. Manchin has uh, confirmed, or voted to confirm, some of uh, Trump's worst nominations. I'm talking Gina Haspel, the torturing CIA director. He gave her a pass. Scott Pruitt, the EPA director. He gave that guy a pass. And Neil Gorsuch, Trump's last nomination to the Supreme Court. Ca um, Manchin voted yes on that guy. So a lot of people in the Democrat Party, they're really pissed at Joe Manchin. And they figure if Manchin votes to confirm Kavanaugh, they're going to shit can his ass in the election. They're not going to vote for the Republican, Morrissey. But what they will do is just not get out and vote for um, Manchin. They'll just sit at home, binge watch um, Mama's Family. Or maybe they will show up because there are other elections that they care about and they'll go with third party candidate or write in Haywood Jablomi. They're not going to help Manchin get reelected at all. Here's the thing. I'm not buying that. We just got to look at the numbers that the Democrats are facing. So anyway, for the Democrats to seize control of the Senate, they need 51 senators. Now, they've got 23 seats that are safe. These are Democrats that are not up for re-election in 2018. So they'll be recycled into the 2019-2020 uh, uh, Congress. This means that they have to pick up 28 de uh, seats in the midterm elections out of 35 seats that are available. This means that there's only seven seats that they can lose. That's a pretty th thin margin. So these Democrats going in who want to go shit can Manchin, they have to think they haven't got too many seats to lose. Now, if it's just Manchin voting for Kavanaugh, I think they do it, because that would send a clear message to all the Democrats running in 2020 for re-election. Hey, you need to stay in line over the next two years. We're not afraid to fire you like we did with Manchin. But if Joe Darley, John Tester, Heidi Heidenkamp, or that rascal Claire McCaskill all do the same thing as Manchin, and vote for Kavanaugh to be confirmed, then you'd have all these other people in those states trying to fire them. You realize you can lose five fucking seats when you can only lose seven. So I think the Democrats are simply going to fall in line with Joe Manchin no matter what he does because they don't want to risk losing a seat. That's just too thin a margin. Now the Republicans, if Manchin was to uh, vote... <laughs> Or Kavanaugh, they don't care. You think that they're going to go with a guy who's kind of wishy-washy, every helping Trump every once in a while when they could go for an actual Republican, Morrissey? Which one of them do you think is more reliable to the, those Republicans in West Virginia? 
kind of a Republican. Clearly a Republican. So no, I don't think uh, how Joe Manchin votes with Kavanaugh is going to affect his chances at all. You know, speaking of Kavanaugh, I was thinking what these uh, Democrats could do with the time they have left is if they can fit, uh, convince Joe Manchin and all these other cats to stay with the party and <laughs> not vote for Kavanaugh, that give them, what, 49, you know, 47 uh, Democrats with their two independent buddies. Then they could try to pick up a few more Republicans. You know, you've heard about Lisa Mikowski, Sarah Collins. But I think that somewhere else they need to look at is the uh, Republicans who are retiring in 2018. There's, there's a handful of them. And I think maybe if they could find something on Kavanaugh that would, uh, these uh, conservatives wouldn't like, they might vote against uh, Kavanaugh because who gives a shit? They're not up for re-election. I'm talking like Orrin Hatch. Uh, I don't think he's too happy with Republicans seeing how they kind of just sort of shoved him out of the way to make room for Mitt Romney. Jeff Flake, he's leaving too, and he's already kind of spoken out against Trump. Why don't you convince uh, Jeff Flake to vote against Kavanaugh? Jeff Flake, he probably doesn't give any more fucks. What they need, simply need to do <clears throat> is sign a Republican senator who has in no way, shape, or form is going to be returning in 2019. Who won't be a part of the Senate at all. I know, Ted Cruz. 